Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Francesco and what I do in these videos is help educate you about productivity tools and resources to help you achieve more in your day. So in this episode, what I wanted to do is actually focus on Chrome OS. And for those who don't know, Chrome OS is essentially like Windows, uh, like the Mac platform, that basically is an operating system to your computer. And Chrome OS naturally operates on a Chromebook, uh, although there has been cases where it's been um, put on different devices like a Windows, um, like a Linux. But in this case, I'm going to be reviewing Chrome OS on the Chromebook. And what I want to do is literally go over for you some of the main features and user experience features um, that allows you to make the decision on whether you'd like the Chrome OS experience. Chrome OS actually doesn't allow you to install applications. And when you're running Chrome, Chrome OS on a Chromebook, that's very much the case. You can't install things like Internet Explorer, things like Skype. Um, you only can use the web browser. Okay, so let's get started. So the core features of Chrome OS are that you have a web browser to kind of do everything you need to do. So here is the web browser. It's Chrome, Chrome uh, web browser. Uh, hence it's in Chrome OS, uh, it's got all the extensions that you can install. So you can still install web extensions um, on the Chrome Web Store um, that allow you to kind of just tweak stuff uh, and make things uh, more easy, uh, easier to get to. You can install Chrome applications, which I'm going to go to in another episode, but basically there, so for example, if I click on Todoist, Todoist made a Chromebook application or Chrome OS application where you can kind of do a slight bit of offline work but it comes up in this kind of separate window, very similar to how uh, Mac OS does it. And they have a few of these. Uh, one, for example, one good one is um, Google Keep, Pocket, and uh, and then Todoist uh, are some good ones to get started. I'll include those in the link in the description to kind of get you ball rolling with that. You can still download files using, a Chrome, using Chrome OS and the Chromebook. Uh, and it goes to a download file section. Uh, and you can access that from um, here, and they'll come up on the tab depending on where you put them. Down in the left-hand corner, you kind of get a dashboard of, it's not too much of a dashboard, it's more of a, like a settings cog to allow you to see what you're doing. So it gives you a name, email address, um, accessibility features on hand, so you can make those tweaks, you know, high contrast mode and things like that. Just take this off. Um, and, and then you can affect Wi-Fi settings here, so you can change uh, different settings and also uh, switch Wi-Fi's. Over here, you've got Bluetooth, and also this is tends to be where your Chrome extension, if you're running one, comes up. So, for example, right now I'm running a uh, Screencastify, which is the, the screen recording technology that I use through the Chromebook. Um, down here, you've got the adjustments for your headphones, and then you've got settings. Settings breaks out into a whole... Um, different page and it's very similar to the Chrome settings on the web browser. You get a lot of uh, details that you can change in there, uh, which is really valuable. Um, so some really decent stuff there to get into access and you can actually turn off lock and uh, get help from here also see the date. Some useful other features are that you can actually um, see how long you've got on your uh, Chromebook left at one hour, 25, 29 minutes left. You can sign out as well, and there's a really cute little notification center. So, for example, if you agree to certain applications like email or Dropbox or news websites, you can actually get them to push um, notifications to here. Not all sites do it, so I wouldn't recommend buying it just for this feature. But it's a really useful way because, as well, it tells you. It also tells you um, what files have been downloaded. Uh, which is quite nice because you can see all of the stuff at a glance and it also pops up. I've got them switched off right now, uh, very similar to Google Now cards. You can clear them all and it will disappear. Um, and they actually thought of integrating this with Google cards, um, but it's something they're working on. So that's the Chrome web browser part of stuff. And obviously that's the core experience. But on the keyboard, that, which you can't see, you can actually, um, if you press the search button, which is, is where below the tab button you can actually hold the search and you can say okay google and it will um, start searching uh, but you can scroll down and actually see all of your kind of google now cards so for example you know i've got plymouth uh, versus Morecambe coming up which i don't actually go to but 
Um, and then news on specific people that you follow, Jack Dorsey, Lionel Messi, Donald Trump, apparently. Um, and then also information about traffic and, you know, stuff you get on Google Now cards, which is great. So from here, you can OK Google it and, oh, ah, ah. Okay, you can OK Google it and get straight into there. Oh, I thought I was going to do it again. You can press into here and see your app tray. You can scroll across, which is quite nice. Um, go into little folders and see the act, um, the specific web stuff that you've got there. You can download all the web applications from here. Some of them suck. Some of them are literally just Android apps ported onto a Chromebook. One, for example, I mean, I'm not, again, I try to be nice about Evernote because I am a very passionate user about it. But their Chromebook Android application doesn't really do it for me. Pockets one's nice. To do this one's great. Pomelo is impressive. Cloud Magic is actually quite good. Uh, really impressed with that. Vundalist actually have a really good one. Any do the same. Uh, and you can also get games on it. So I downloaded that one a couple of weeks ago just to try it out. You can also Google Photos as well, which is great. So there are some really great applications for this, um, even in offline mode. So that's really a basic overview of the Chrome OS and Chromebook experience. I mean, one thing that I find impressive about the Chromebook, although it's, you know, I would probably do a video on this separately, although it makes it impossible to edit videos, impossible to do the big creative stuff or anything like that, it's actually really light. Uh, and it actually, one thing that impresses me is that the Wi-Fi is pretty good. It always seems to beat other people at getting Wi-Fi. Um, and also the user experience is dead simple, like, it's just really clean, like on a Windows, maybe on the Mac's a bit better as well. So it's probably just above from the Mac, just because it's got, it's obviously got less than the Mac, but the user experience is, is dead simple to get. So if you're buying this for an older person or a very young person, they'll get it straight away. Um, and uh, you can get the ball rolling without having to do much. So that's quite important. Anyway, guys, that's everything for this video. I really appreciate all the comments recently. I really appreciate if you would comment about whether you like the Chrome OS experience or if you're a Mac or Windows or Linux user or Ubuntu or all of those really amazing things out there. Thank you very much, everyone. Make sure you have a great week. Keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.